The Indian Air Force has decommissioned one of the four remaining squadrons of the MiG-21 fighters today. The 51 squadron will again be resurrected with the induction of Tejas Mark 1A fighter jets in 2025. The Indian Air Force will decommission one MiG-21 squadron each year, which means that the three remaining MiG-21 squadrons will be decommissioned by 2025. Economic Explosives Limited has announced that its Nagastri 1 loitering munition has completed user trials by the Indian Army that has more than 80% indigenous content and can carry 1.5 kg warhead to a range of 15 km in the tactical battlefield area. The company has also developed and tested the Nagastri 2 and Nagastri 3 loitering munitions in Ladakh in March this year. The Nagastri 2 can be tube launched or catapult launched and it can deliver a 4 kg warhead to a range of 25 km. The Nagastra 3 is a vehicle-mounted tube-launched loitering munition that can carry 10 kg warhead to a range of 100 km. Munition India Limited has announced that it has established a facility that is ready to start operations to manufacture warheads for the BrahMos missile. BrahMos Aerospace has also received the first ever indigenous boosters from a private sector firm Economic Explosives Limited earlier this week. Both the boosters and warheads of BrahMos missiles were procured from abroad till now, and this indigenous manufacturing of warheads and boosters is a major step towards indigenization of BrahMos missiles. The DRDO chief has said, that the development timeline of the indigenous high-altitude long-endurance UAV will be quicker than that of the TAPIS drone. He also added that the long development time cycle for the TAPIS drone is due to the steep learning curve of R&D centers and indigenous industry. The DRDO has fast-tracked the development of the high-altitude long-endurance UAV, and it will enter fabrication very soon. It will have four times the payload capacity of the TAPIS and will operate at 45,000 feet with an endurance of 30 hours. Amid the reports that Tungbo Imaging will deliver the LPO's electro-optical fire control system to Bharat Electronics Limited for integration on the newly ordered 118 Arjun Mark 1A tanks of the Indian Army, latest reports indicate that India can also integrate the LPO's fire control system on its T-90 tanks that will enable it to automatically identify and track multiple targets. The LPO's fire control system integrates a cooled medium wave infrared imager, a color high definition charge coupled device camera, a laser range finder, and a ballistic computer. The Ministry of Defense has released a tender for the procurement of 12 sets of 1.25 MW gas turbine generator for power generation from Indian suppliers that will be installed on board three Indian Navy ships. The indigenous cast turbine generator would also be considered for installation in new warship projects towards product standardization. <laughs> Defence Minister Rajnath Singh reviewed the working of the seven defence companies that were carved out of the Ordnance Factory Board to mark the completion of one year of their operations. Six out of the seven companies have already indicated profits. The seven new companies have projected cumulative sales target of 17,000 crore rupees for the current year, which is significantly higher as compared to previous achievements.